everyone. My name is Alex Cassano. I'm the events coordinator here at the Clearwater Historical Society. Today I want to present to you Historic Clearwater. I'm going to be speaking about the history of Clearwater today, uh, but before we get started, I'll tell you about my books. This is a Florida ABC book. It's a children's book. My second book, which is a pictorial history of Tarpon Springs. Um, I've captured uh, numerous buildings and sites, as you'll see here. My third book, I, don't, I didn't bring it, but um, it's A Photographic Journey, Natural Beauty in Florida. That ranges, uh, it's a collection of my nature photos from 2014 to 2018. Um, so if you like nature photos, make sure you get that one. This is a history of Palm Harbor. Um, in the last presentation, a lady asked uh, about the Wall Spring School, so I talk about that um, in greater detail with this book. Um, also, too, I have uh, my Pinellas County book, um, which deals with the whole uh, Pinellas County coast um, and Pinellas County Peninsula, um, so I'll be sure to get that. My sixth book um, is uh, Stark Dunedin, A Photographic Journey, A History of Dunedin. Um, then, my seventh book is Historical Beaches, a Photographic Journey. It speaks about the history of the Gulf beaches from Clearwater Beach to Paso Grill. Um, then also I've written that I don't have um, on hand, which is Safety Harbor. Um, I've written a history of that uh, and Historic St. Petersburg and others. So be sure to check that out on Amazon.com. Um, there you are for sale. So let's get uh, started with the history of Clearwater, shall we? This is our first site we're uh, talking about today. Um, it's called Selden Abbey, uh, and it's a cemetery that was established in 1853. It is the oldest cemetery in Pinellas County. It has many notable burials, including Charles D. Chickon, um, who was the creator of the comic strip Blondie, and to Alfredo Antonini, who was a famous conductor, composer, organist, and pianist. He was also the music director at CBS TV. Angela Dundee, who was the famous boxing trainer, um, and Courtney Campbell, who was the namesake of the Courtney Campbell Causeway, um, who, which connects Clearwater to Tampa. So this is a K-pop tree and Sam Ash music stores. In the 1870s, a man by the name of Robert Hoyt planted one of the two K-pop trees that he bought in India. In the 1950s, a band leader and singer by the name of Richard Baumgartner brought the property. Uh, Richard Belton designed a restaurant called the Cape Bon Tree Inn and operated it in 1958. People would visit the Cape Bon Tree from all over the world. Um, after Richard's death, his family took over ownership of the property. They sold the property to investors in 1983. In 1991, the restaurant was closed um, and then it was reopened in, 19, um, in the 90s as Thoroughbred Music before I was sold in 1999 to its current owner, Sam Ash Music Stores, which occupies the per property uh, currently. And it's amazing. I just want to come over here for a second to point out the immense size of the Cape Bock tree. And it's, and it's still blooming. It's still alive to last, uh, a tree to last this long and not to cut it down is pretty remarkable <laughs> in this day and age and also the building too. Um, as you can see, this, these are some former pictures of what it looked like as the Cape Bon Tree restaurant. Mm -hmm. And Sam Ash does have some remnants still at the restaurant. You can still see some of the statues. Raise your hand some if you've been to the K-pop tree. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, God. Most of you have, so this is probably not new for some of you. So. Mm -hmm. This is Calvary Church. It was founded in 1886 as Midway Baptist Church. Over the years, the church had several name changes and many pastors. It was officially named Calvary Baptist Church of Clearwater in 1923. The church grew over the years and acquired the land for its current campus in 1999. It moved to its present site in 2005 on McMullen Booth Road and it has two other church locations, one in East Lake and one in Seminole. And as you can see here, this is McMullen Booth. This was downtown Clearwater. Unfortunately, they tore it down 
This is Derek Crom. You pass the same. I'm sure you. I'm sure you pass by quite often on Gulf to Bay Boulevard. It was originally built in the 1960s. Um, it serves, of course, ice cream, milkshakes, and more. This is the Francis Wilson Playhouse. It was open to the public in 1935. Um, Francis Wilson was a famous Broadway celebrity, and the Playhouse holds different local me music and dramatic productions. This is the Clearwater Garden Club. Um, in 1950, the Clearwater Garden Club was formed. Uh, the goal of the club was to promote the botanical beautification of Clearwater through the outreach uh, of community-centered programs, and it's still there on all, all 19 or um, Fort Harrison. This is Clearwater Public Library System. This is the most recent location of the main library. Um, the first temporary location of the Clearwater Library was a subscription library located on Cleveland Street. The library received a grant from the Carnegie Foundation to build a permanent structure, which officially opened to the public in 1916. The library grew over time and the re renovations took uh, place on the Clearwater main branch. Multiple locations were added to the library system, including the Clearwater Beach Library, um, the North Greenwood Library, um, the Clearwater Countryside Library, and the Clearwater East Library. This is the Bellheimer Capitol Theater. Um, it was opened to the public in 1921, so it's 100 years old. Um, it is known um, it, to house many productions, events, and cinema over the years. And it's currently owned by the city of Clearwater, but Ruth Eckert manages the theater. Um, and I'm glad they kept it on Cleveland Street and not destroyed it. This is a Clearwater post office, also on Cleveland. It was uh, built in the 1930s, and it's still um, thriving in the community of Clearwater. And the building's architectural style is uh, Mediterranean Revival, uh, and it was designed by Theodore Skinner. This is the Peace Memorial Presbyterian Church, um, which was organized in 1891. The current church building was built 100 years ago. Um, it serves the Pre Presbyterian community of, the, of Clearwater. Also, um, this is where um, the courthouse originally stood, now it's the church. This building looks familiar. <laughs> it was founded in 1978 as the Clearwater Historical Society by Gene Homer to preserve the history of Clearwater. The current location of the Historical Society, of course, was the Old South Ward Elementary School, which we celebrate today on South Ward <coughs> Elementary Day, their school day. It was built, this building, which is the museum, was built in 1906, but later closed in 2008. Also located on the property, this white building here next to us, next to the event center, um, was um, the Clearwater High School building, the original Clearwater High, which was built in 1912. The high school later moved to the Greenwood section of Clearwater in 1924, and the high school building was um, located on the property, also served as the Clearwater Junior High from 1924 until 1964, um, and uh, we're currently open to the public on Fridays and Saturdays, 10 to 2, if you would like to visit us somewhere. This is an Episcopal Church of the Ascension. Uh, it was built in 1925. Uh, it's in the Clearwater Har Harbor Oaks uh, neighborhood. Does anybody know which television show it was featured in. So, um, it was featured in Rock 66, and it was um, featuring Martin Melner and Glenn Corbett, and then eventually uh, George Maharis. Uh, as I was saying, the last uh, episode, um, there was a scene where um, Barbara Eden uh, starred in the ep uh, final episode, and Mar Martin Milner married Barbara Eden's character. <laughs> <laughs> so it was filmed in the church, the wedding scene. So. This is a restaurant located on Gulf to Bay Boulevard in Clearwater, Florida. Um, it was called the Sweden House Mortgage Board. It was a popular 
buffet style restaurant, um, as you could see here, they had all kinds of options and it was located on both of them. And a lot of um, what happened to Clearwater happened to most of Pinellas in Florida and all over the United States. A lot of the buildings got demolished and destroyed and replaced with newer progress and development. And that's just a heartbreak. This is a Bellevue Inn. Boy, that's the one that originally opened in the 1800s. Uh, it was originally built uh, by Henry Plant in 1897. And Henry Plant was a railroad magnate. And he was famous for building the Tampa Bay Hotel, which is across the bay in Tampa, which is now home to the University of Tampa and the Henry Plant Museum. The Bellevue Biltmore had 145 guest rooms. Many famous guests stayed in the hotel. And the hotel celebrated its 100th anniversary in 1997. It fell into decline and closed in 2009. In 2016, a developer by the name of JM JMC Community, excuse me, developed a plan to save and preserve the hotel that reopened to the public in 2018. I'm so glad they preserved it. Um, instead, they were talking of demolishing everything, and I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they were able to save some. It's a shame they didn't save the original, because um, it was a huge hotel. This is the Bel Air Garden Club. It was organized in 1950. <clears throat> the Garden Club would originally meet in the members' homes in various event spaces until 1974, and the Garden Club moved to its permanent home in the old Bel Air Town Hall building, which was, this was built in 1966. And they have monthly educational and horticultural programs. This is Ward Seafood Market. It's been a staple in the Clearwater Bel Air area um, uh, for fresh fish. It started in 1955 when Millie Ward and her husband Johnny started selling their fresh fish that her husband uh, would catch locally. Ward's quickly grew and built the current building in 1956. It is still family owned and operated. Does anyone know the three staples of Pinellas County? What were the industries that thrived here? Citrus. Citrus, that's one of them. Fishing and the railroad. Those are three in industries that impacted Clearwater and Pinellas and Florida. Um, but unfortunately, the fishing uh, fell into decline. Or they're still going on, but it's um, unfortunately, it's not the best quality right now because of the red tide. And I don't want to go into that now, <laughs> because you might know about that. Uh, but the railroad declined also in Pinellas. It's now the Pinellas Trail, um, that unfortunately, and the citrus really was decimated too because of the, there might still be some orange groves, but not many are left because of the freeze uh, in the 70s and 80s that killed uh, all the plants um, and decimated the citrus industry. It's a shame because right now Pinellas County is known for its tourism and beaches, which is great, but the original Pinellas County was known for its railroad citrus and fishing industries that really drove the economy in the Thomas County. This is Sam and Joe's Pizza. It was built on Clearwater Beach in 1925. It was formerly Angelo's Pizza uh, and it's currently Sam and Joe's. So this is Frenchies. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, they have uh, five locations plus um, uh, throughout the Tampa Bay area, one in Dunedin on the Dunedin Causeway, and a lot on the beach, but this is the original location, which was built in 1944, but Frenchies was later established in 1981, and this restaurant features one of the best grouper sandwiches in the Tampa Bay area. This is Chapel by the Sea. Um, in 1949, the Chapel by the Sea was organized by Clearwater Beach Community, and the land for the church was donated by the Skinner family. The church services were held in 1952. This is the Palm Pavilion Inn. Um, it was built in 1926. The inn features a rooftop observation deck and an outdoor heated swimming pool. Also located on the property is the Palm Beach Shop and the Palm Pavilion Beachside Motel. And formally, it was called the Hotel Seaview Motel. Um, 
as you could see, it hasn't really changed. Mm -hmm. And that's the wonderful thing about Clearwater Beach. A lot of the beach communities, of course, were replaced by condos, but Clearwater Beach and the Gulf Beaches do have some remnants of the 50s and 60s and beyond uh, of real estate and architecture. It's great to have that feeling that in the Gulf Beaches, um, that there's still remnants of old uh, history, um, which is great. And I hope they never demolish the old buildings. This is Sand Key Park. It was opened to the public in 1984, and the park covers 95 acres. Although it's not marked, this, in this photo, as you can see, it looks hilly, right? It was probably, most likely, I'm not guaranteeing this, <laughs> an Indian mound, as most of Pinellas County was. And is. <laughs> this, I forgot to talk about, this is an old photo of a man um, with a giant checkerboard. Recreation was so popular um, within Clearwater mm -hmm. and Clearwater Beach. Um, it was, that was another industry, too. Um, how the hotels and the, the beaches promoted the relaxation and the recreation for tourism. people. Tourism. <laughs> yes, better known as. Um, but this was a popular activity as well as shuffleboard, chess, uh, lawn bowling, uh, um, and several other recreational activities too were promoted throughout the area. This is beautiful uh, Clearwater Beach in the 50s, 40s. And this is it today. Mm -hmm. And these are my sources. Thank you to the Florida Memory Collection, which is the state archives, <coughs> for the photos and the rest, the text, the design, and all other photos besides the one I mentioned above are the property of me, Alex Castano. Well, thank you so much for coming. And <laughs>